What's going on everybody? I hope y'all are doing okay today. Uh, in Alabama, we're getting ready to wind down this deer season. We've got about a month left maybe. And uh, due to popular demand, I have got people asking all the time, wanting to know how to cape the hide off of a skull for a shoulder mount. Uh, the regulations in Alabama changed a couple years ago. We can no longer bring uh, whole heads or bones back into the state from other states uh, because of CWD. So in order to bring the deer back into the state, you have to actually cape the hide off of the skull and remove the antlers with the skull cap. Now the skull cap uh, has got to be clean. You've got to, you've got to take, get it all the way down to just the bone, clean it up and uh, preferably put a uh, borax on it, make it nice and dry. Uh, there's a tissue between the brain and the skull that also has to be removed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show y'all how to actually take this cape off of this skull, uh, kind of step by step. What I'm going to try, I've got on my chesty, and I'm going to try to mount my camera on here and give y'all a first-hand view of what you're going to be looking at while I'm doing it. I hope that it's going to be far enough away to where it's not like right up in front of the camera. But uh, I'm going to check it time to time and see if maybe it looks all right to where y'all can... Uh, kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to get this camera mounted up and get me some gloves on and get my scalpel and we're going to get started. Alrighty, we got the camera rolling now. Maybe this will work. See how this goes. All right. Well, first what I like to do, I like to take some hand sanitizer, get you just a little bit on your hand to wear it, to put on up under your gloves. Uh, a couple years ago, I got a horrible flesh-eating bacteria in one of my fingers after I got poked from touching a deer that had been rotten. And uh, that is not fun. So I would suggest always using hand sanitizer under your gloves in case you get cut or something happens. Just gives you a little bit of a barrier of protection there. I like using vinyl gloves to do this because that way it does give you a little bit more room for error if you accidentally nick your hand. Sometimes it won't even make it through the glove. By the time you've realized you've hit yourself, you can stop and all you've got is a glove. So what I use is, this is a number 11 hobby knife blade. Uh, if y'all have watched some other videos, that's what I use on every single thing in my whole shop. I use it for fleshing, uh, deboning, I mean everything. And it's just, they're razor sharp, a little small tip edge on it, you can get in and around uh, real small space is a lot easier. So anyway, what I've done, I've saved a few of these heads. I've got some in the freezer. I've got some people going to come over here to see this done firsthand and maybe practice on some themselves. But since the season's kind of winding down, I figured I'd go ahead and save some and get this done before I forgot and ran out of uh, heads to mess with. So, all right, we're going to see if this will work. Maybe y'all can see what I'm doing here. All right, you're going to start right in between the, the antlers here. And on the back side, kind of go about, I don't know, right in this area, about a four o'clock, 4.30. You're going to make a V back here. If you just kind of pull the hair out of the way a little bit, and just make you a cut from the base of that antler right down to the center of the back of the head there. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side, right there right into the middle. Those two sides right there are just gonna connect. Move this down a little bit for y'all. Have a little bit more light. There we go. Maybe y'all can see that a little bit better. You can see right there where that V has connected in the back. We're just going to peel that up. Back up to the burr of those antlers. And once you get that like, like that, you're just going to take your scalpel and go around the base of each antler. You just kind of take your time. It, it, it'll barely even holds on to that antler out there. It's very easy just to pop that loose. It'll just come right off. 
Do the same thing on both sides. My camera's making any racket, me hitting these antlers on it. I'm sorry. Audio is liable to be terrible on this, but maybe it'll give y'all an idea. If you have to, just mute it and watch. <laughs> Once you get around about as far as you can get around, that thing's going to get really tight right there. It's going to get to where you can't hardly peel it anymore off around from those antlers. Right in there. You're going to go back here to the back and make a cut all the way down past the, the meat of the neck there. This is one of those reasons why it's good to cut off as much of the neck as you can. If you can cape it on up this far, that right there is ideal, that's perfect. A lot of people leave a whole bunch of neck on there. And you can always go back and cape it up and cape all that neck out, but uh, as a taxidermist, most of the time you're just not gonna have time to deal with all that. Not when you're getting 100, 200 deer a year. So I just make my cut all the way down past where I can get that head, it'll come out the back side of that. What you're gonna do on the back side, go back to that little point right there of, of hair, where you can see where the hair you're still up against the base of that antler, start going back the other direction. Just keep that scalpel right up against the base of that antler, right up against the bone. We all can see that there. Go all the way around the base of the antler. Once you get to that, they're still, they're still connected on this outside edge. If you'll pull this side up, you can just start peeling that hide back, back toward that ear. You'll be able to see right here where the cartilage of the ear is, where that ear butt connects to the ear. You can see the, the cartilage is attached. Just take your scalpel, cut right through that cartilage. And it'll, that, that ear is going to turn loose. See, once that, once that cartilage turns loose right there, then you can pull it on down. You can work that hide right off the bottom of that antler. And something that you don't have to be careful about where this meat is right here, any of this, this meat that gets left on the cape, just leave it. Uh, as a matter of fact, the more muscle tissue you leave on that cape, the better off you are because it insulates that hide and it will keep it from freezer burning. So you don't have to worry about getting right up against this leather. If you're leaving red meat and anything on there, leave it uh, because it's actually beneficial. When you put that in the freezer, it's gonna insulate it and it's gonna make it keep, I mean, it'll keep up to two years if it's got plenty of meat and tissue left on it. Uh, so like that right there, just, I mean, just leave it all on there when you cape it off that head. As you see, it's, it's all the way down now off the antler, the ear is cut off, and you're just gonna flip it over and repeat the same thing on the other side. Guess I could have played some nice elevator music for y'all or something while I was doing this. Alrighty. Now, see that's it's got all that off of both sides. Now what you're left with, you've got both the ears peeled back, tops peeled back off the back of the head. So now if you'll stand that up. The head stood up, the rack stood up. On the back side, when you go down the edge of this, the edge of this hide right here, just 
it, you can stay right up against the skull if you want. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you take all that meat with you. You're better off taking the meat with you than cutting holes all in your cape. But if you'll watch right here under the back of the neck, it's actually going to be the front of the neck, right in front of the throat, where these muscles are up under the bottom of his uh, throat. If you'll pull those up, the cape is going to be right up under those. It's a little bit hard to see with all the meat and sinew and, and, and blood and stuff, but when you, when you pull that up, if you'll just cut straight back in toward the deer's neck right there, that cape, if you can see that cape, it'll just peel off. And after you get it away from that, you'll really be able to tell where the edges of it are. You can see right there where it's starting to peel away from that. As you're doing this, just keep spinning the head and get it all off evenly, all the way around the head. What that'll do is keep your hide from getting tight in one point or another where it don't want to pull. It'll just keep on coming uh, very evenly. It'll be a whole lot easier on you to get it done. Okay, now we're down to the eye socket. This right here may be the most important part on the entire deer head. If you know how to do this, then you're okay. You, the rest of it is a piece of cake. All right, you're going to be able to see the edge. Once, once I get up to the edge of this eye socket right here, you can see, see the lip on the outside edge of that eye socket. If you will put pressure, pull right here against that and just keep barely nicking the edge of that eye socket, you see how that hide just keeps stretching. As you pull and you, you cut, it'll, you'll cut through different little layers of that sinew you can see it's just continuing to get longer and longer and longer, but it still doesn't have a hole in it. You just keep working from the top, around the back, and you can see it's starting to go up inside that eye socket right there, but it's still attached. Just keep going around the bottom, around the sides, and just keep working it all the way around. Once you get down where it's real thin, eventually, you'll see right in here, it's going to pop a hole in it. Right there. Once you get that hole in there, you've got all this skin that you've been pulling, you know, working thinner and thinner. Well, you can put your finger in that hole and just stay right up against the front of that eye, right up against the eyeball itself and go right around the edge. Now, when you get to the front, I forget what this thing is called. I ain't no scientist <laughs> or biologist, but this, this little black piece right here that sits right in front of the eyeball, it's right, right between the tear duct and the eyeball itself. If you will stay between it and the eyeball, that's what you want to do. Look for that. Use that as a guide while you're peeling this out. And just kind of start on, on the bottom or top end of it and work your way. Pull against that, that eye where the opening that eye is, the cape, and just barely slice. And it's going to do the same thing on this side. See how it's working itself loose? Make sure you keep the point of this down in this hole right here too, where that tear duct goes down in that hole. If you cut it flat, you're going to cut a big old hole in it right here, which is fixable. That's not a horrible problem. But you, if you'll keep that, that scalpel down in that tear duct, right in this hole right here, hoping y'all can see that good look. My lighting could definitely be better. I'm sorry about that. But if you'll keep it right down in that hole, then your tear duct is going to come out like that. You can see there's the, there's the tear duct itself right there. And what, what happens is then when you get your, when you've gotten your eye cut away like that, you can see how much flesh there is here. What that will allow your taxidermist to do is trim what he doesn't need, but he still has something. You've got to have that to be able to tuck around that eye when you do your mount. When you go to, to put that mount on that deer head, I can show you all like on this one right here. Um, you can see where that eye, let's see here. You see where that eye around the edges, I still have an epoxied down in there, but you can see that gap that's where that extra skin is tucked in between that glass on that eye and the modeling clay that's around it. 
So that's what you're going to want is that extra, that extra skin and, and really honestly as much of it as you can get. You can flip it over that way. If, if you're right-handed, you're better off going this direction and then just flip the, the antlers back towards you and you can continue to go the same direction with your right hand. It makes it a little bit easier because then you can pull against it with that left hand and it's not, you don't, you're not having to work across your body. And now, like I said, you know, if you cut a hole in this, it is just no big deal. I mean, it can be fixed. It ain't no problem. Uh, the main thing is knowing, knowing how to do it perfectly and trying to work toward that. That way, when you do mess up, because it's going to happen, you're going to still end up with the best result that you were able to, to, to end up with. And, and there's nothing you can do to this thing that a taxidermist is not going to be able to use. I promise you. I've seen some that are that are really bad. I mean, I've seen some that don't even have skin that can be tucked around the eye and I've had to rebuild it with epoxy. So, but you see right there where it got thin enough, it finally come on through the eyeball. Just stay right there against that eye. So I can get in here where y'all can see. Stay right against that eye, all the way around the edge of the eyeball. Not, not just around the eye socket, but the eyeball itself. Stay, you know, stay up in there around the edge of it. Till you get, you see that black, that little black thing right there. <laughs> it has a name, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. You go right here in between the eye and that right there. Keep your, like I said, keep your finger in here. Keep pressure on that. Pull against it, and it will just continue to stretch and thin and stretch and thin until you got the maximum amount to bring back with you. And then stay down inside that tear duct with that scalpel. All right, piece of cake, right? Okay, so now we're a little over halfway there. I'm gonna go ahead and take that bottom and skin it on up where it's even with the rest of everything else. All right, let's, let's do the mouth. So you wanna stand the skull back up, pull the cape back down, and where you see what you're working with. This is the way that I like to do this. Take your nose and you want to get to where that gum line is. You want to go right along the bottom edge right here. Don't get up into this lip because you're going to have to, or your taxidermist or whoever is going to have to split that lip and turn it, double it up basically to where it's split and you've got extra skin to tuck into your mouth on your mount. So when you're cutting, make you an incision right down the bottom edge of that gum line. I'll do that on both sides. You can see where I'm, where I'm cutting right down against the bottom of that where you've still got plenty of, of this lip left. And then when you start cutting this below the nose, keep all this cartilage, keep all of this intact. And just keep your scalpel down here along the nose bones. Uh, the easiest thing I can tell you to do on all of this, uh, especially if you don't have any experience at all doing it, like right here where I'm cutting through this cartilage and kind of getting back toward the, the cape on it, you don't necessarily have to do all of that. If, you, if you're not sure what you're doing and you're trying to be very careful, just keep your, your scalpel right against the, the bones of the skull. And all this extra, all this extra flesh, nose cartilage, everything, it doesn't hurt you. I mean, it doesn't hurt one bit to take all that to the taxidermist because it's going to insulate that hide and a taxidermist can remove whatever he does not need, but at least he's got everything that he does need, which I think is probably the most important thing about mounting a deer head. There's nothing worse than somebody bringing you less than what you've got to have to mount it because it's already there on the deer when you kill it. All right, so that's got the top caked right down there off the nose. And what you're gonna do on the bottom jaw is the exact same thing. You're gonna pull that down and stay right under the bottom of the teeth 
and right along the inside of the mouth, right along the bones of the bottom jaw. So that just separated, you've got all this lip. You don't want to cut through any of this. Just stay right up against the bone of that bottom jaw right there. All the way to the back. Same thing on this side. to the back of the, the mouth. You don't have to go all the way back. But... You want to go at least as far back as to where the top and bottom lips meet right there, where that's loose from the skull. So you've got that loose on both sides. All right, now you can lay your head back sideways, flop that back over, pull this back forward, and all that you've got left connected is this little bit between that that you just did and the part that you caped beforehand. And all you've got to do is just stay right up against the bone, cape that off, turn it around this way. Sorry if I keep moving my hand in the way. I'm trying to wake my camera back up so I can make sure I'm looking at what y'all are looking at. All right, just cut it straight down right into the bone as you're pulling. And all that'll come right loose. And there's that. And you got your skull. You got your cape. Piece of cake, right? Ain't nothing to it. Best way to store this, if you've got to throw it in your freezer, uh, especially if you've already caped it. Uh, I like to do this at the house when I'm caping them myself, but when people bring them to me from out of state, I'll tell you something that's very helpful to do for us as the taxidermist and for you yourself uh, to get back a better looking mount. If you will take this thing and put lay the ear flat like this and then take the nose, roll over that ear. Take the top part of that V that you cut and just tuck it down in like that. Roll it over again, tuck that ear down Roll it over that ear, and then neatly just roll that up in a roll like that. Then when you can put that in your garbage bag and put it in your freezer. What that's going to do is, it's going to protect the tips of the ears, and it's going to protect the nose and around the eyes from freezer burn. Uh, the back end of this cape is a whole lot thicker. The, the fur is thicker, the leather, the hide, everything is thicker, and it's going to insulate all of that stuff so that the worst damage you ever have on a cape that's been in the freezer too long is usually going to be the top half of the ears and around the nose and eyes. Uh, even the top of the skull cap, right above uh, the top of the skull, since it doesn't have much meat or fat, it will also freezer burn pretty bad around the base of the antlers and right there on the top of the skull. So this right here will, will protect the whole entire head of that deer, which is the most important part of the whole mount, really. Uh, and you can put that right there in your garbage bag and stick it in your freezer. So I'm hoping that maybe that right there will kind of give you all an idea of what to do. Uh, at least with a video, you can go back and rewind it or replay and check it and start over again. So just make sure that you take your cell phone and the YouTube app out in the middle of the woods with you so that, you know, if you ever go out of state, and I hope surely that you've got the opportunity sometime because it is... It is absolutely amazing. I mean, I love deer hunting. 
I don't care if it's big deer, little deer, whatever, but I, I myself am a trophy hunter and I love hunting the state of Alabama, but uh, going out west and up north and stuff, you get to see stuff that you don't ever get to see here. And it, it is very rewarding. It's, it's, it's fun just to go and just to see what's out there. But you do have to cut this, you kill your buck. You've got to come back into the state with that off, uh, off of the skull. And uh, there's any taxidermist will do it up there. Most of the time it's it maybe 20 to $30 what they charge to cape one. The problem is you might end up on a farm somewhere that's an hour or two hour drive from a taxidermist. And after you've already spent five or $600 in gas, plus $350 tags, plus food, you know, to go up there and hunt, then to have to drive another two hours and spend another $30, when you can do that right there in 15 minutes, uh, I mean, even if it takes you 30, I mean, it's not hard to do at all. And you can't really mess it up. Um, even if you cut a hole in it, nick it, whatever, that can be stitched up. It's really not a problem. We see worse stuff on a daily basis that happens to these hides than you could possibly ever imagine. And if you're watching this video and know how to do it correctly, you're just gonna be that much further ahead of the game. And that cape is gonna be so much less damaged than somebody that brings us one that tried to do it that has no idea what they're doing. So anyway, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Uh, please give me a subscription. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. And maybe there's something else on here that can help you uh, either clean a deer or mount a deer, or maybe if you just like watching me go sit in a tree and see a deer here or there. <laughs> I got some fish videos, different stuff on there. But anyway, y'all uh, hang around and see what's gonna come next. And I will holler at y'all next time.